Bullhead City, Arizona. We're looking for William Cool. We're also looking for William Reeves just down the road in Mojave Valley. But what I want to do is I want to bring each and every one of you into this case in a little bit more detail as I introduce you to my brother Byron, who really I'm training you. I'm showing you exactly how do I choose these cases, how do I choose the locations while we're here, and how are we going to break it down as to what's the most probable? What do we feel as though was going through Robert's head? Does he disappear because he may have been carjacked? Or is it something to where he's in his 80s? We've seen our grandpa. We've seen our grandpa start to get arthritis. And unfortunately, a lot of older people choose different ways to leave on their own terms. Some of them by pills. Some of them, we start to see more patterns. The more that we do this, when we have a vehicle that's missing and a person that's missing, for us, we come into this out of the box thinking. If a car is missing, where can it be? You got the Colorado River here. And the Colorado River is kind of the main reason why we came here initially. We're in January of 2023, just over a year after Robert went missing, and the river is drawn down for wintertime. You can practically walk across the river. While I initially had plans of running 10, 15, 20 miles of river from Davis Dam all the way down past Mojave Valley in search of not just Robert, but as well as William, it's out of the question now at this point. So let's bring you into the RV where it's a little less windy. We'll go over our case notes for these two. I will also bring up Sartopo, which is a program that we use that we're able to map out. What's a five mile radius? What's a 10 mile radius? What are some of those locations that I've decided to choose along the way? And I know that you've seen a lot of this stuff, but if you've not seen, and you've not been a part of this before, we kind of go based off of a, who was the person? What's their history? Are they older? Are they younger? Were they a veteran? You know, unfortunately 22 veterans a day, and I think the number is higher now, decide to, you know, check out on their own terms as well. And so do we have that going on? Did he decide to take a trip to another location, say California or somewhere to visit family? Well, Robert, from what we've heard, doesn't have any family, according to his friends. He may, we're just unaware of them right now. And so we start creating a profile of this person to again, what's gonna be the most logical that we may have a chance of finding him today. So let's jump in where it's wind, not windy. We'll go over the case notes and we'll break this down for all of you. Of the people that I find underwater, in my opinion, I feel as though 50% of them could have escaped if they would have had a window breaker. And the last thing I wanna say is just a big thank you. For those of you who purchased these, it helps us get out there on the road to help pay for food, for fuel, for new gear, as we travel the US, helping families and law enforcement for free, as we search for missing persons underwater to give these families answers and to hopefully bring home their lost loved ones. So the first thing we have is a lot of viewers or their family members will actually reach out to us and say, hey, our loved one is missing, or hey, I just saw this on the news. We know that you are focused on people that are missing, 
that are missing with their vehicles. Have you heard about this case? Mm -hmm. We then take it, we put it on a big map, and then several times a year, we say, all right, right now it's winter time up north, everything is frozen, and so let's plan on a trip down south. And that's where we're at right now, meeting up with you right here in Arizona, and we're going to be working our way down into New Mexico, over into Texas, Mississippi, everything south right now to where the waters are not frozen and we have uh, you know, better weather to work with. So as we're making that route, or we're now saying, all right, who is along that route that we believe as though we have a good chance of finding them because we start building this profile of them, their vehicle, what type of a community were they living in? So we start breaking down, for instance, right here in Arizona. So we have Laughlin that's just over the uh, river here, the Colorado River. We have Davis Dam to the north, and then we're down here in Bullhead City, which then just down the road also mm -hmm. is Mojave Valley. So that's where William Reeves comes into play as well as Robert Cool. Robert's from Bullhead City here. And what we know, you know, I kind of mentioned it before, is Robert went missing on January 2nd, just over a year ago. Now, any time that you can come back into an area near the time you know, um, as far as seasonal wise mm -hmm. that he went missing, it gives us a good idea of what the area actually looked at, looked like at that particular time. So because we know the Colorado River gets drawn down in the winter time, it's going to be very similar to our search today, whether it's in the river or it's up in Davis Dam. But then as we pull into town here and we look at the river here, and we talk to the local fire department and you know, they even had a dive team that stopped by yesterday. They said, yeah, you can walk across the river here. You are not hiding a vehicle, especially since it's crystal clear and all the activity that takes place here. But they did say up in the lake, up above Davis Dam, there's a few locations that we might want to take a look at. So we'll, we'll jump over here to our SAR topo map in just a moment and talk about that. But before we do, what else do we know about Robert here? You know, other than, you know, his height and his weight is not a big thing for us. We know that if we find his vehicle, we know it's going to be Robert. So what we're looking for is we're looking for a 2007 Honda Civic. Now, some people say it's a Del Sol. Some people just say it's a, a Honda Civic. So there's a little bit of confusion there because as you look at a Honda Civic versus a Del Sol, and you're looking at a Del Sol is a smaller car as you know, the top, the T-top that comes off versus a Honda Civic which is, you know, a full size mini, you know, a full size compact car mm -hmm. versus more of a little sports car. So either one we're looking for today, especially if we find somebody inside of it. So now we know the vehicle, the vehicle that we're looking for. Is there anything else that we know? Like, is there family that we can reach out to or are there neighbors that we can reach out to? What do we know about Robert? Well, there wasn't much information on Robert because we didn't have those contacts. And so what we do now is we start breaking it down into our SAR topo. And we start looking at the map here. Normally what I'll do is I'm gonna start with one central location here. So I know that Robert was from Bullhead City here. So where did Robert live? Where did he work? Um, where did he go to school if he was a younger gentleman? And put a five mile radius on that one because normally that's where you're going to find somebody that's missing. You're also looking for habits, like habitual patterns throughout the day. Yep. Uh, where, whereas, you know, most, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna profile them this way, but I'm gonna profile. Mm -hmm. Most older people, like our grandpa, mm -hmm. he would always go to Walmart once or twice a week. For sure. And so within this radius, we have Walmart that's just down the road from Robert's house. You know, another thing I'm thinking of too is around these gambling towns, you know, you have gambling legal just on the other side of the river mm -hmm. and you don't on Arizona and uh, you know I think a concern that hits me immediately is is you know was he a gambler I don't know if you have any of of that and we have um, no information on that one but that's yeah. that's where Laughlin then comes into play you have leadest possibly you know more north towards where the access to the casinos are because I do know a lot of the same thing you know I don't want to profile either but I do know that a lot of older um, uh, people who don't have families, they do have, they do have hobbies, and when they live near gambling towns, that usually is their hobby. Right, and so that's what we have it right here. You know, so we do have Laughlin. We have all the casinos right here that are within that five mile radius. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to okay, let's look at any possible accident locations. Well, if he's leaving Bullhead City and he's going over to the casino, there's one bridge right here that he's going to cross over, and then he's right here at the casinos. Well. 
again, the Colorado River is so shallow and clear right now, there's no vehicle in there. Then when we start looking at William Reeves down here, for his location down in Mojave Valley, you have a lot of Indian tribal reservation down here. And we took a drive yesterday uh, as we pulled into town and a lot of the access points into the Colorado River are actually completely fenced off. You can't even get into them because they're protected by the reservation. And so for William, for the most part, there's nothing that we can do to, to locate him. But let, let's talk about him for just a moment because there's a few things I wanna point out. We have Richard Reeves was last heard from September 2020 while residing in Mojave Valley. The mother of his children had passed away and Richard may have been depressed. So now we have somebody that's, you know, ready to potentially check out on their own. He reportedly made comments about jumping into the Colorado River. Mm -hmm. So now when you have just this information, it's like, okay, well, you don't have a vehicle. He's jumped in the Colorado River, mm -hmm. which means then after a couple of weeks, he's potentially going to be found. Mm -hmm. But then there's a, you know, a few other clues. He may have been driving a white Ford F-150 at the time of his disappearance, but it's unconfirmed. Mm -hmm. We don't have any confirmation on it. We don't have a license plate number. But then again, coming back to Fort William, the only water within a five mile radius is the Colorado River, mm -hmm. all too shallow. And so that's why we're going to come back to just Robert here and really focus on Robert, but also knowing, hey, if we run across a white F-150, we need to take that seriously, sure. okay, rather than just a Honda Civic. So let's come back up here to Robert. So we know that going south, the Colorado River is out of the question, so that our 10 mile radius down south. No other water is in the area within this 10 mile radius for Robert going south. So then that brings us up to the north here. So let me jump over to and change the map up a little bit. Give us more of a street view on it. And as we head north, here's our five mile ring, but there's nothing prior to the dam that gives us any deep locations. Mm -hmm. As I was pulling it up on the maps, there's one potential right here below the dam. However, this is completely blocked off. There's a gate that's located right here and there's no public access up into this area. Now, people that are choosing to leave, they're not, or, or an accident location. So accident location is out of the question here. But if this was open, then it's like, okay, well, it might be an accident location for Robert if he was up here late at night, early in the morning, I don't know. But because it is blocked off, it's not a on purpose location now. Mm -hmm. People that are also choosing to do something on purpose that we have found for, you know, as we do more of these, they're not going out of their way to open gates, go around and go off roading, especially in a Honda Civic. Mm -hmm. So what is an easy out of the way location for them? to do something like this because again, I don't have any accident locations in this entire area. I have nothing that says, all right, Robert went for a drive and he accidentally ended up. Mm -hmm. So the sad thing is, is I do have to treat this as a on purpose. Mm -hmm. So now we start breaking it down is we have one road right here. I don't know if this is public access. This is the, an old state route that used to come up and around and over the dam. And so when we leave where we're at right now, let's drop over into Laughlin here. Let's take this old route and let's see if we can actually go up and across the dam. If we can, we're going to keep this in mind, but I want to treat this as one of my last locations because I don't feel as though it's the most probable location. Now from there, heading north, staying within our, uh, just outside of our five mile, but here we go, we have a lake. He's from the area. Um, you know, was he a fisherman? Did he have an accident? I mean, he, he, there's a slight chance of an accident going into water if he was up fishing and he put it into forward instead of reverse. However, very unlikely based upon what I've already seen. But let's break down the marina. When you jump over the marina, way too populated. I don't care what time of year it is, but also when you start zooming in, you have your boat ramp but you can actually see how shallow it is in there. Mm -hmm. The water is clear. You can, even on Google Maps here, you can see that it's shallow. So this marina, I'm taking it off the list. There's no reason to go waste our time there. We then have 
the one just to the north of that, again, it's January, so you're not gonna have all these cars there. This is more of a summertime activity. You can see everybody's lined in the beach here. But with the beach here, same thing. You have mm -hmm. your access point, but you know, 30 feet out, it does drop off. Does he know that? Um, does, is it quiet up there? Is it early in the morning that he just, you know, gets enough speed that he just goes 80 miles an hour into the water and he's like, whatever happens, happens. And he makes it past that ledge and he's down there. 100% possible. So we want to make sure that we check this location. The next location, now yesterday the fire department, the Bullhead City Fire Department and dive team met up with us and they said, here's a training ground that we have. And this is in cabin, cabin something, like, like cabin cove. And they said, we have a bus that's in there. They're like, we don't even know where the bus came from, but we use it for diving. Mm. They said that there's a couple of cars as well as a couple of boats in this area. So what we want to do is when was the last time they were actually up there doing their dive training? What vehicles are actually in there? And so while we can rule out the bus on sonar, we need to really focus on any vehicles that we find in that area and come back and search those. Now where the boat ramp is at over here, I don't feel as though it's very possible or plausible because you can actually see how shallow it is through there. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at just on the south side here. And did Robert have any connection to hearing these rumors of, oh yeah, there's a bus down there. So now in his mind, it's deep enough mm -hmm. that if he drives off into that cove, it's going to be deep enough and eventually he's going to be found. You know, because he, he wants to check out. I'm, I'm just saying if he wanted to check out, he knows that he can check out and that he will eventually be found. So this is my number one possible location. Same thing with the one to the north here. Now this one's just outside of our 10 mile radius. That's a ways out. But, yeah. but, you know, it's January. It's a nice quiet drive as he's, you know, making his last drive. And does he want to go to the furthest location? Again, you know, to me, the ramp looks as though it gets really shallow here. So here's your ramp, shallow, and you don't have anything off of these other edges here mm -hmm. that are close for a Honda Civic to go off. So I'm not interested in any of this over here. I'm only interested in the boat ramp. So right now, those are the three potential, more highly, very highly likely, potential, potential, absolutely not, let's drive past this one just to put eyes on it for, for sure and so that's how i break down the day from there huh. so every person that goes missing does have you know an investigator somebody's looking into it so you know for this one we've actually got a scott sharp who is an investigator but do we reach out to them yeah, a lot of times we do and other times we don't we just kind of like it's kind of like a gut check like what mm. type of resistance or pushback might we get because like well who are you uh we're not going to share the case files with you whereas other ones we have law enforcement that reaches out to us and they say here here's all the information can you help us out what's the <laughs> difference in those I've... what you're doing is you think about this you're coming into an area to where this is his job sure we're coming into this as civilians mm -hmm. so think about somebody coming into your place of employment mm -hmm. to say byron listen i can appreciate that that's your job but I might be able to do your job a little bit better than you. For sure. So now what you have is you have local dive teams mm -hmm. that you could be stepping on their toes. You have a local investigator that you're, I'm going to say, outsmarting them for yeah. their job and what they were doing. And so some of them say, yeah, open arms, please come help us. Whereas others are like, this is my job. If anybody's going to solve it, it's going to be me and Just you're going big, to butt heads. Big. But. but you also run into local turf wars that it's not even us. It's a, sometimes you have a local fire department versus the police department mm -hmm. and they end up butting heads and they don't, they don't work together. Mm -hmm. This community seems very, after meeting the, the uh, fire department yesterday, I don't think that's the issue here. Yeah. However, for us, it's easier for us to just come in with zero red tape mm -hmm. and just say, all right, here's the locations. These are public locations. Mm -hmm. We don't have to ask for permission. We don't need permission. We're just going to go out there on our little boat with our sonar, and we're just going to enjoy a nice little float, and we're going to see if there's anything under the water for targets. And if there is, then we, as civilians, we're going to dive on them. Mm -hmm. And if we happen to identify, hey, we have a Honda Civic or a Honda Del Sol, if the windows are down, you know, we'll see if we can identify if anybody is inside. If the windows are up, Normally after, you know, a couple weeks, a couple months, 
you're not going to be able to see inside at all mm -hmm. because just because of the uh, s sediment and you know uh, algae growth and whatever starts growing on the vehicles and so we don't go busting windows we don't we don't disturb the vehicle other than we normally grab a license plate to confirm that when we come topside and we make contact with law enforcement we have physical evidence that they can look at that says yes 100 percent there is no doubt that you have this and then we offer up our services what can we do to help them out mm -hmm. and if they you know if they have a great dive team like the bullhead city here they won't need us to do anything further we've marked it for them mm -hmm. so let's move your car up the road a little bit to a safe spot jump in the rv with us and let's just start tackling those out with our uh, game plan today Hey Byron, let's say that these other locations we don't um, find Robert at those. Just for my own peace of mind also at the very end of the day when we bring you back to your car, yeah. we'll double check this boat ramp. Um, even though I feel less hopeful on it because it's right next to the casino, very well lit. We want to make sure that we rule everything out in the area just in case there's a, you know, even a you know, 10, 15 foot pocket that's deep enough that you can't see clear, through the clear water right here on this sub boat ramp. Road closed at Davis Dam. Well, I guess that saves us a couple of miles uh, heading down the road then to the dam. So the cabin sites, I think, are going to be a little more busy because they're actually cabin sites up there. The other thing I like to do also <clears throat> is we have actually solved a case before that when you look at a desktop version of maps mm -hmm. versus a mobile version of maps, they are actually different. In what way? In that some of them will update before other ones. So a mobile version map, okay. we found updated before the desktop version. And because of that, like in Florida, there was a new retention pond that had been dug that didn't show up on desktop. I remember that one. And so you always want to double check on your mobile device as well as your desktop device. But anyway, you can see where we're at. And I mean, you can see, look oh, how far out. so shallow. Whereas on the desktop this morning when we were looking at it, you yep. couldn't see it. So there's not even a reason to throw a drone up. There's no reason, because this is exactly where we're at right now. So shallow. Yep. And so you can see there's the there's that first buoy yep. that's out there and then the other buoys that are out there when it finally starts to drop off but you're not getting a car no, it's 75 yards. through that yeah so that one rules this one off so this one's a this one's a bus then this one's a bus so let's head to the one to the far north and then we'll come back to the cabin site point after that With these cases, you think that people want to be found after they're gone? I really don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not them. I don't have those answers. I didn't speak with them beforehand. Yeah, is it a, I want to disappear forever and nobody find me? Or do I want somebody to eventually find me? Sure. I don't know. There's never been like a pattern that I've noticed that's like, oh yeah, 100% they want us to find them. Sure. I have one case that I'm really working on that I want to find him and I think he wants to be found because his name is Brandon Perdue and he left uh, when he told his girlfriend, he said, make sure that you look in the glove box. Okay. So that indicates to me that he definitely wants to be found. Sure. Oh well, yeah, this is uh, Okay. So this see, is a drop off yeah, right so there. See, yeah, so see the water color? Yep. So it's shallow for like to the end of the dock there yep. and then you do have a hole there. Yeah. So we definitely want to check this one.
so what we'll end up doing, Byron, is we'll put you in here with the camera, so that way uh, you're gonna observe, and that way you can watch both of the, exactly what it is I'm watching. Um, but yeah, the big thing is for you to like watch and learn, and we'll teach you about this. The waves are all right right now. Like if, if you have like white caps, like it's 100% out of the question, but we're in a little cove. We're not going that far out. We're not like hitting miles and miles of lake here. So I don't have any concern that it's going to hinder us from locating a vehicle if there's a vehicle in here. So on your monitors there, Byron, you're gonna see on the bottom one is starting to come up for this one over here. And you're gonna see that we're casting 75 feet left, 75 feet to the right. On the top one, it's auto. And so anything that's black water column is going to be from the boat to the, to the floor bed. So right now you can see that we're at seven feet, 6.6 .6 feet, you see that? Yep. And then once we get out past the dock here, then it's gonna, that's where that drop off's gonna be. So let's just kind of get lined up with everything and then we'll just shoot straight off the ramp and just do a pass straight on out. As you're looking at the hummingbird here, you see on your left hand side, it's going to be the shore and that's all black because it's not picking up anything that's above the water. So again, anything that's black is water column down the center where your boat icon is at. And we're looking for a vehicle that's roughly gonna fill in one of those spaces like between the 18 and 36 because a car is going to be you know 20 you know 15 to 18 feet or so sure the del sol is a little shorter yeah it'll be shorter so probably be 12 feet or so but it's gonna fill you know half to two-thirds of that space of a blocky object is what we're looking for so we're in 11 to 15 feet of water right now so 11 on this side with hummingbird where the transducer is at but just three feet away, it drops off, so now we're at 15 feet over here. Right. And this other one's live scope? Yeah, so this one's live. Anything that's happening is happening in real time over there. So if you see a fish swim by, it'll swim by in real time. Whereas this one over here, the hummingbird, is a picture in time. So a vehicle's not gonna make it this far out. But it's a nice smooth bottom. What's nice about this, especially on live scope and side, you can see it's smooth. So we're not dealing with false readings of like great big rocks that are in the water here. And then your down imaging, you'll use your grid lines to be like, all right, we're looking for a vehicle that's gonna be four to six feet tall. And that's what it will give you a nice big definition of a taller object to help verify. So between live scope, side imaging and down imaging, you'll be able to pinpoint and verify whether we are looking at a vehicle. So now we're gonna come up on 10, and now you can see the bottom again. So it's nice and clear there. So no vehicle on this side. We'll verify the other side. So the discrimination between whether it can or can't is pretty quick at some of these locations. It seems like, like there's only really two possible spots here, right or left of this dock and about uh, how far out? Uh, so usually 80 to 100 feet out or so. Really about this is gonna be our max out. But you see how the max out is 19, 20 feet, plenty deep to hide a vehicle. So we did that right along the shore. So now we'll just kind of come in straight on this second boat ramp here, finish clearing it and it'll be good. So how much does weather actually affect how far in a still body of water like this? Like if there's a 20 mile an hour on shore, is that gonna push that car pretty far? Yeah, it'll, it'll push it a lot further, depending on how big the car is, the engine compartment, or the, uh, the, uh, the uh, passenger compartment, the weight of the vehicle, the direction of the wind will all play a role in it. The same thing will go for uh, rivers as well. If you're in the Missouri River and the river's ripping, you know, we found a vehicle down, you know, 750, 800 yards, whereas normally in a river we'll find it down 150 to 200 yards. And the thing is with those rivers also, you have to think about like how's the current also flowing. Normally when a vehicle goes in, it's going to keep that vehicle tighter to the shore that it's not going to push out in the middle of the river because of the current and the weight of the vehicle. So you see it's 50 feet out here. Yep. What, we're, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna change the uh, throw that we're doing. We're probably gonna go like 110 or so because everything that's black is water column. So now we're only looking at like you know, 20 feet or so left and right. So now because I changed it, now we can see 
you know, 30, 40 feet left and right, even though we're casting 102 feet right now. And so now you have to keep in mind, you're not gonna make a jump over 75 to 100 feet. You want to make a jump over just enough that you're still coming over where your last reading was at. And then because we changed the scale of it to 102, now your object is gonna be a lot smaller on screen there than it was before. How small would it be on this screen? This screen's about six inches wide. So look at your uh, grid. So we're running 25, 50, 75, 102 right now. Uh -huh. So if we're looking for a vehicle that's you know 15 foot long, it's gonna take up anywhere from a third to two thirds of that screen. So see like, look, look at this screen here, the hummingbird, and look at the right hand side of it. See how I have an object about halfway down on the side scan right now in the 60 foot yeah, range? Okay, so I'm interested that's not normal because we're dealing with a flat bottom. Okay. So let's head back over there and put ourselves right over the top of it. And we know it's roughly 20 feet to our right yeah. from where we were at. With that second pass just now, we did not pick, it, pick up that object that we were looking at. So that's why we go over it several different ways to just verify. All right, well, I'm satisfied with uh, this area. Let's pack it up and head down to where those dive objects are at, the bus and the other car. Oh, mounts up, mounts up. Ah, there we go. He's heavier than it looks. Yeah, back in uh, when we started, we had to inflate the boats at every location. Oh gosh. Assemble them, disassemble them. Oh wow. A lot nicer yeah. So uh, with someone that doesn't have any family contact, known family contacts, possibly one in a chat room, I know you contact law enforcement if there's a, the vehicle's found. Do you then extend to that person that might be a family member in the comment section or you just leave it be with law enforcement? I leave it be on that one. Now the thing is, is when we work these, we're normally working, we're here for the families. And so right. We, you'll see a lot of our cases we're working side by side with the family and so if i have a direct family contact 100 percent, i will always let them know first right. and keep them updated whether they're with us or not and then i will let law enforcement know for me as is, you know a dad a grandpa a brother yeah. i want to know immediately and so i give them that respect yeah so if we take a look at this over here you can, yeah. you can come off here. You could ramp it off of this. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's still too shallow right here. You can see the bottom here. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to ramp off of this, you get across the parking lot here and make a run at it. And maybe that's how the bus ended up in here. I don't know. So we'll definitely check out this cove over here. And then as far as the boat ramp, boat ramp over here, I'm not hopeful on the boat ramp at all because see how shallow it it's is It's super shallow yeah yep and then as you come back down here also same thing you, you can ramp off of any of this into that deeper water into the cove there yep. Beautiful water. Like we never get water this clear for most of our searches. Normally in really muddy water. Yeah, so anything right off of this, 100% no. And you can see the bottom, it's only four feet deep here. 
so we're really going to be focused on that hey can we ramp a car off of the uh upper parking lot yeah, all right here's our deeper water this is nice so right okay so see that see how that pops up oh yeah that's that's gonna that's, that's gonna, cool that's gonna be your bus yeah right there wow uh we'll see it on live scope soon uh if i go here yeah let me put it on live scope for you yeah, i'll yeah, show you yeah, what it looks like see what live scope looks like Okay, so see it coming up, see it right there on there LifeScope? Is. Look at that. So now what I can do with LifeScope, I can kind of stop, back up, park over it. But you can also like turn your LifeScope and see different angles of it as we turn. Yeah, I see that. Oh yeah, definitely. It's like an old schoolie. You got the front, like the forward front on it. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah, there's your school bus. So yeah, so it's pretty much straight off the dumpster there. But yeah, then you can move your, kind of like a flashlight, move your sonar up and down. See all the fish at the front of it? At the front of the bus? At the front of the bus. On the live? Yeah, on the live. So all those dots up there at the front of the bus, yeah. that's all fish. Wow. I guess they're going to school. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. So now let's keep scanning through here and see what else we see. So that's at 43 feet deep. So now on side scan down and live, now we're gonna look for any other vehicles that might be out here. Okay, look, here's a car here. See that? Coming up on it, oh, I can see it on live. So I see it on live first, and now you're gonna see it right now. See the car on the down? I wouldn't, I w me, I mean, I'm inexperienced. I wouldn't know that that was a car. Yep, so we have a vehicle right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come a little closer to shore because it was on the right side of the boat. So we're gonna come right over the top of it. And we're gonna eyeball it where it get a, pinpoint off of the beach and then we'll come straight off the beach and get a different angle of it yeah okay so now it's on the left so it's about 20 feet from the route that we just took so we're gonna move over 20 feet and I want to get right over the top of it and find out right where it's coming off of shore at got it okay so I'm coming up to it right now I can see it on live we're 15 feet away from oh, it yeah there it is now we're five feet away from it now you're gonna see it pop up on live right there or on uh, down, I mean. On down, yep. Oh yeah. Okay, so it's right in line with the little goalie. So we have the great big green bush there. Yeah, basically that. And it's right where the goalie comes out. So now we're gonna go and hit it at a different 90 and see if we can kind of identify what type of a vehicle it might be. We'll see if it's right side up, upside down. Oh, what's that on live? That, I'm gonna say that they have turned this into a diver's playground. Oh, okay, and it's a little sign. And so I'm gonna say that they actually know about this this vehicle here, and that that would be like buoyancy control to go swim through those. Oh, I got you. Oh, little gates. Have you ever played with those? The what? Have you ever gone through uh, like a dive park? No. So anyway, that, that's just my guess as to what it is. So there, okay, so we're coming up on it now. So that's actually, I'm not sure what that is. Almost a van maybe. Yeah, it's got a little hatchback that might be open or something, it looks like. Yeah. But see how it's on the hill? Okay, so so let's look at this. Okay, in fact, I'll, I'll put a point on it for what we're looking at. So that's a waypoint that we're going to put. So with that waypoint, it's directly over the top of it. And what I want to point out is see how it's on the hillside coming down? Yeah, that's that shadow thing you were talking about. Yeah. And so when we came directly offshore, we weren't able to pick it up. But when we, were do, when we were going parallel with the shore, then we were able to see it better. Right. So just the way that the shadows are different. So again, the 45 flattened it out. Yep. So we're gonna go back parallel with shore again and go right over the top of it. And what I'm really trying to do is just, I'm trying to identify, is it a white F-150? Is it a van? Is it a vehicle? Is it the vehicle upside down? Is it right side up? And the more that you, uh, watch this and do it you'll be able to start to pick up on that it's like oh i can see the wheels so the wheels are up oh the wheels are down oh the windows are out because of the way the shadows read differently okay so i can see it on live so see it on live coming up yep i see it on live it almost looks like there's two vehicles side by side but i can't quite tell but when you look at the down imaging now over here see how it's just one 
All right, so let's keep that one in mind. Let's keep it going, and then we'll come back to it, and we'll see how many are out here. And that's marked on waypoint, so it, it'll be easy to navigate back back to it. Well, plus I know it's at that bush in the gully, and I just put it in my head for a minute. But yes, it's on waypoint as well. Now the other thing when scanning, especially when we have slopes, you'll actually want to do a scan closer to shore as well. That way, if there's anything right up against it, you're not missing that shadow. So we'll do another pass, probably about 25 feet offshore as well, just to confirm. Then we'll go out further into the cove as well. And what we're looking for and what we're hoping for is a third vehicle out here. Because two, they were where they're aware of. So it's really a third that we're looking for. Pretty clear water out here. Oh yeah, you can see the bottom there. All right, so 20, 30 feet from shore, yep. 20 feet of water. So this will be farthest out that we go. Yep. And then just scan the entire cove. Yep. Or at least half. I'll scan the entire cove. Okay. Just to make sure. But you notice the, you know, both the bus as well as that car, or van or truck or whatever it is, you see they're about the same distance from shore. Yeah. It's, you know, pretty standard, pretty normal for that's how far they're going to be. So I'm not expecting anything further out here. Yeah, unless there's a third one over here, I'm not diving on that other one. Simply because they told us there was two here and you have the buoyancy rings in here for diving. So you have divers in here quite a bit for dive training. Yeah, this is clear, Byron. We do not have Robert here. So that's gonna leave us with the uh, one more location downtown at the casino boat ramp. See if it's deep enough there and see if we have a hidden pocket. What do you think what you see? Like shallow. Y yeah, that's not going anywhere. <laughs> I mean, the, nothing. We, we can walk right there. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, it sinks a little bit, but I think it gets shallow again right there. <clears throat> no, I think it's shallow. Yeah. So then this is where we turn, you know, to all of you. And we bring you into, this is the story of the day. This is where we searched and to bring awareness to tell these stories. You know, where is Robert? Where's William? If you're a fisherman, we encourage you to start turning those fish finders on, your sonar on, at the boat ramps, not just when you get out to the locations that you know, you're looking for the fish. Identify, see if there's any vehicles, let, lo lo let local law enforcement know, hey, we found a vehicle and really push them to get on it, like get an answer, like, did somebody dive on it? Is there anybody missing in the area? Start looking that information up. But is there a Civic that's out there somewhere that you notice it's a blue Honda Civic and you know nobody ever knew where it came from and it got towed off? You know, follow up on that one a little bit. Um, you know, if, if by chance, let's say that you know Robert ended up with you know, with um, dementia and he's just lost and confused. We've there's been people that have been lost and confused for years before they're found. But then what if this is a scenario like, um, oh, who did we have? Virginia Collier. She was actually missing for three years and they finally found her up in the mountains. So, you know, as you're out there hunting and fishing and you see a vehicle up in the mountains as you're out driving, put your eyes on these vehicles and see if there's anybody inside of these vehicles. Or if you notice something's maybe a miss, like the vehicle has been there for like a year or two, walk around because a lot of times when these senior citizens, they get stuck They'll then venture, and usually no more than 100 yards, 200 yards from the vehicle, 
and they will die of exhaustion, of uh, hypothermia, of dehydration. And it's a sad thing. There was a, you know, a couple last year, they actually had an RV with food and everything. They got it stuck. Then they took the car, they got the car stuck. And unfortunately, they both ended up passing away. So these are the things that happen out there. So we just, you know, we as a community, as a society around the world, just need to be aware of that, just to always keep our eyes open. So at the end of it, we do appreciate you being here and supporting Adventure of the Purpose as we're searching for those that are lost and helping to bring home and give answers to those families looking for their loved ones. We're gonna head down the road. We're heading into New Mexico next and fingers crossed, we're gonna be able to solve a case over there. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you, bye-bye.